Hiya! It's Pad Hopper again, and I'm coming to you today to show you a tutorial on how to do backgrounds of uh, large coloring book pages. And this is a tutorial that I've been asked to make. And uh, you need a few tools to get started. So I'm going to show you what you need. You're going to need some cotton balls. You're going to need a pair of scissors, colored pencils, and you're going to need a coloring book, of course. I'm using uh, Johanna Basford's Enchanted Forest. I love this book. And uh, I bought it just a few weeks ago after about uh, oh, eight or nine months of searching for it. Um, bought it just a few weeks ago at Costco of all places. Of course I'm working on the froggy page. This is the first page that I'm working on in this book. Of course, of course I went right to this page. It's the backgrounds that, that are the hardest because they're the largest and uh, you can't really do them um, if you were to just like take your a uh, pencil crayon and uh, go in tiny tiny circles it's going to take forever for you to fill this giant uh, image up so most people just leave uh, the background of their page blank but I'm going to show you a quick and easy way and you don't really need um, any expensive tools and then one day I was sharpening my pa uh, my uh, pencil crayon and um, a bit of ash fell on my page and I went to wipe it away and I kind of liked the result. So this is uh, accidental find. Okay, so what you do is you take your thing and your blade of your scissor. You see that? And you just run the blade of your scissor over your colored pencil until little bits of color ash down, like it'll rain all down on your page. Okay, and you're not harming the colored pencil at all. Kind of twirl it so that you get it even. Okay, get like little ashes of uh, of the color pigment on your page. Okay, now watch. This is where your cotton ball comes in handy. Take your cotton ball. Now this uh, page. Take your cotton ball. This page has got some fine detail, so you're going to need to rip off a hunk and uh, put it on your finger. I use my index finger, and you just kind of smear these ashes, these bits of color ash, around and around and around. until it fills up the area and blow off the excess. Okay. And if you leave this area in and around, your image is going to look like it's glowing. You like to see more and so you just keep going all over the page until the entire background is filled in Okay. 
And if you keep your the amount of uh, cotton ball that you put on your finger small, you can get in and around the various images in the background uh, better. And you can mix colors too. So I think I'll add some more of this lighter blue here. Spin the color pencil so that you're not taking just from one area and then you're not going to ruin them. You're going to end up with some ash like that on your scissor. No problem. Just put it on your cotton ball like that and then use it to work in the area. Okay? You're going to kind of pat it around. You can pick them up and pat them into other areas. And you just kind of move it around until you get it where you want. And then start rubbing in a circular motion and it really does fill up the background of the page and you can do a background very very quickly and it's a soft kind of marbly effect and it looks like you use chalk or pastel or some watercolor but all you did was use what you already have. I'm a really big believer in the fact that you do not need to spend a fortune on materials to make a pretty coloring page. Use what you have. We are meant to be coloring for enjoyment. Um, so going out and spending $450 on a package of colored pencils isn't exactly what I call enjoyable. <laughs> so I'm serious when I tell you, you can get a beautiful page using the materials you find at any big box store. That's what this channel is about, to show you how you can do things even on a budget.
And the great part about doing it with a colored pencil and instead of uh, pastel is you don't need to put a fixative on the page because it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to get on adjoining pages. So I kind of go as close as I can and not really touching and I don't really go over every single area and then I get this really cool marbly I have some ash here there you have it there's the sky and it took all of five minutes and I and if you leave these little edges in and around your uh, main part of the colored page it'll look like that part of the page is glowing off the page so there you have it. That's how I do backgrounds. Thanks for watching.